G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring, and I'm sitting in mum and dad's uh, little camper van today because I've just finished a lithium battery install for them. I've pulled out their 100 amp hour lead acid battery, an AGM, which had just come to the end of its life cycle, two, three years of regular use and it's dead. So that's gone. Um, and uh, dad decided that he wanted to replace it with a lithium battery. So I've helped him out with an install and we've stuck a 150 amp hour uh, lithium battery, uh, old spark lithium battery from off-road living in its place. And I thought, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother running through what we've done here or anything, because we've done that before on build videos and stuff. We've done lithium battery installs. We've spoken about why lithium battery is, how it's different to lead acid and why in many ways it's better and all the rest of it. So we're not gonna get into all of that. But I thought this is a really good time to chat about um, something that I'm hearing a lot of and I'm, I'm getting quite a few questions about it as well, which is like we've done here, people are replacing lead acid batteries in established uh, systems with lithium, but uh, they're getting confused with some uh, lithium battery suppliers that are advertising their batteries as a drop-in lead acid battery replacement, um, effectively saying that you can pull out your existing uh, AGM battery, put a lithium in, and you don't have to char change any of your charging gear. It's a drop-in replacement. And um, there's that's a bit of marketing spin because essentially, I guess it is true in a way, um, depending on what charger you have and what lithium battery you're putting in, there is no special like magical BMS um, that'll that'll handle any sort of charger and any sort of charger algorithm. That That's just, that's not true. Um, but there are some cases where if you can change modes in your um, battery chargers, uh, that you can use a lithium battery off lead acid chargers. But it's not good practice, and I'll explain why. Uh, in some cases, it's very unsafe for the battery in terms of like longevity and stuff. You're gonna end up killing your battery. Um, but almost always, it's, it's just poor practice. And it's, it's, it's never gonna charge efficiently, and you're not gonna get the best out of your battery. So we'll chat about that. I'm not gonna get too technical because I don't know everything about it. Um, I only, I'm sort of just gonna scratch the surface on it. I'm not gonna go out of my depth here. Um, but I think I can give you a, enough information from this uh, where you can do some of your own research. Don't just rely on marketing material from battery suppliers. Um, you know, do your own research because I'm, another thing that I'm seeing happening is people are listening to this, this sort of marketing material and they're buying um, lithium batteries without fully understanding what's involved in the install then they're finding that it doesn't perform well at all and sometimes doesn't perform at all. And they're going to auto electricians asking them to fix it. And auto sparkies are really hesitant to want to take on a half done job um, with a poor performing battery. Because if anything goes wrong in the future, you're going to blame that auto sparky, even though it's probably the equipment that you bought that just wasn't up to the task. Anyway, that's just my two cents, take it or leave it. Let's talk about lead acids as a drop in battery replacement. So. Um, effectively, that's what we've done on um, this build. Uh, the, it's already got a DC-DC charger which has a lithium battery charge algorithm, so that's really easy. I can just change the settings there. Now, the AC charger doesn't. It's only got an, an AGM um, charge profile. And there is a reason why no reputable battery manufacturer will recommend charging lithium battery off a lead acid charger. Probably the main reason what can make it, um, what can damage your battery first is going to be the battery maintenance modes that some of these chargers have. Lead acids batteries, for good maintenance, they need a desulfation and an equalization mode. Uh, that works really well on a lead acid battery. It's terrible for a lithium battery because it's way over the charge voltage that they require. 15 to 16 volts into a lithium battery. The BMS, the battery management system or battery protection system, BMS or BPS, is gonna try to protect those cells by opening the circuit, effectively switching off the battery. Um, and that's a protection mode. So if they go into these battery maintenance modes, high voltage, um, uh, scenario where the battery is going to disconnect, the BMS is going to disconnect, and you might have to you may have to jump start the battery to restart it, or sometimes they're auto resetting, in which case they're just going to open close that circuit on and off. It just gets stuck in a loop where it just keeps switching, depending on the charger. Sometimes it's a preset time period, and then eventually it'll come out of that. But it's inefficient for charging, and it can potentially damage your battery. So that's the first thing you need to know about, and the most important. A lot of um, AGM charge uh, or lead acid chargers with AGM profiles, you can manually switch off that desulfation, equalization or battery man uh, maintenance mode 
if you can, that's definitely the first thing that you would need to do if, if you did want to use a lead acid charger. But there are other things that, um, that, aren't, that are going to be an issue for you as well using a lead acid charger. Lithium batteries have a really, they want a stable charge voltage of 14.6 volts. Some lead acid chargers will charge uh, higher than that, so there's another issue there. And depending on the battery, they may go into a battery protection mode if it's too much uh, over that charge voltage. But also the charge profile is important. A lead acid charger will generally bulk charge, like it rams in that current, up to about 80% state of charge. And then it goes into a few other stages, but essentially like an absorption mode for the last um, 20%. And that absorption mode can go for like two to eight hours. It's generally time-based. And the problem with that, if you're charging a lithium battery, lithium batteries want to go um, bulk charge pretty much right up to almost full, and they have a really short absorption charge. That's why lithium batteries charge so much faster off lithium chargers. But what can happen using that lead acid charger with that longer period of, of absorption, um, the uh, lithium battery often won't ever actually hit a hundred percent state of charge, especially if you're running loads off the battery at the same time, like, you know, which you may be like fridges and things like that as, you, as you're traveling. So that's important to note. Finally, probably the most frustrating thing about trying to charge a lithium battery with a lead acid charger is that a lead acid charger won't trigger a bulk charge until a battery is about 12.7 volts. It'll take a voltage reading, that's when it decides to start that, that bulk charge. Now that's fine with a lead acid battery like an AGM. It's a problem with a lithium battery because at 12.7 volts, your battery is you know, super discharged. That's a problem for um, cars, caravans, or motorhomes or whatever that are relying on um, charge while driving from your alternator or charge from solar from, from the sun because those windows are both fairly short, aren't they? You're driving for three or four hours normally. You only get six hours of, of sun a day with you know, flat panels on your roof. So it needs, the charge needs to be efficient. If your charge is not gonna start charging a lithium battery until you're at 25%, um, you're gonna, it's, you, know, you might go your first day or two and you never get into a bulk charge, even though you're driving and you've got solar and all the rest of it, but you've ran down 75, 80% of your battery capacity and it might not start fully charging until day two, day three or whatever. And by that time, um, your three hour drive or your six hours of sun is never gonna get your battery up in a day from 20% back up to 100%. Um, so that's probably the most uh, real life frustrating thing about, about trying to charge lithium batteries off lead acid. It is doable, uh, especially if you can turn off those um, battery maintenance modes like your uh, equalization and desulfate, desulfation modes, but it's really bad practice. It's just not efficient and that's why you'll never see any reputable brand like Red Arc, Drive, Victron, Projector, etc., that sell charging gear or sell lithium batteries, uh, reputable stuff like the AllSpark batteries um, from Off-Road Living or Drive or anything like that. They will always tell you to use a dedicated lithium battery because that's how you're gonna get the best performance, like best bang for your buck, and that's how you're gonna get the longest life out of your battery um, and your battery charging equipment as well. So I hope that helped. Um, hopefully I didn't waffle on too much about that. Mum and dad are absolutely stoked with their with their build. Um, or out of out of interest, um, yeah, the DC charger, the, there's an energy drive 40 in here, so that's fine. I've turned it down to 30 amps, which is about right for the 150 amp hour battery and the small alternator on this car. I, I'm able to use that because it's got a lithium um, charge profile on that one, so I've changed it. The AC charger, I don't know what brand this is, RV Pro. I'm not able to use that because I, I, I did find their manual online and they have an automatic equalization maintenance mode that you can't manually turn off. So that charge is no good. I've isolated it for now. It's coming out and I'll replace that with um, Victron to a nice uh, model that'll fit in the same spot. So yeah, uh, drop-in battery, kind of. It was with the DC charger, not with the AC charger. Um, and that's often the case with um, many uh, vehicles. If it's a modern charger, it's probably got a, a lithium uh, battery charge profile on it already. It's well worth checking before you commit any sort of money to, to lithium batteries. You want to know what your outlay is going to be before you get started, don't you? All right. Cheers, guys. Uh, see you in the next one.